Hey y'all, so this is gonna be a little bit of a different video. Um, I did ask you guys on my community uh, post, are there any stocks you want me to look into? Of which only one person responded with a stock. So I'm gonna actually go through the Zoom stock and the Zoom company and kind of show you um, what I think you should be looking for from like a investor perspective, not from a speculator. I'll talk about just some random stock tips, 401k stuff, and we're going to talk about Weeble. So definitely be sure to keep it locked for all that and more. It's Crystal with the Cash Compass. All right. Welcome or welcome back. I am here to teach you all the things that you should have learned in school about money. But for whatever reason, they forgot to mention it. If you love all things personal finance, investing, and economics, you're definitely going to want to subscribe. Hit the bell while you're down there. It's all free. You know I got you. I ain't going to charge you for that, okay? It's my treat. It's on me today. <laughs> Let's get into it. All right, so when I first started kind of like in the investing world i just kind of did it blindly you know i think we don't get that education in schools and i didn't have the passion i have now for kind of looking for information on my own so when i got into my first big girl job they was like just get a 401k there's robo advisors and they're gonna do everything for you and you'll retire in like 50 million years from now and you'll be like thank you robo advisor right so i was just like mm, okay it sounds good to me um and that's what i did right and for a long time, I did not really know what was going on. I couldn't tell you not one stock in my 401k. I could not tell you how much I was paying. I could not tell you what a prospectus was. I couldn't spell prospectus. I mean, I was completely confused, right? Um, and I think a lot of people probably share that same sentiment with me because when you're first starting out, there's not really proper education. And if you have proper education, drop it in the comments below. Like, how did you get your resources? Was your job proactive in educating you? Or did you just go out there and get it yourself, right? Because I think a lot of times you have to go out there and get it yourself. I had no clue what it was to be a fiduciary and how that could actually cost me thousands of dollars, right? Because if you did not know, a lot of these companies do not have a fiduciary duty to you. So you might have a robo-advisor who you think is going to be, um, what they, at least what they told me was every quarter they're going to be analyzing you know, my, in my portfolio and then they'll reallocate accordingly or whatever. So I'm like, well, that sounds great. They're monitoring it four times a year. They'll make changes when it's necessary. But those changes will not necessarily have to benefit you. The changes could benefit the company. Right, because they don't have that duty to you. That's what the fiduciary duty is. A fiduciary is somebody who's gonna be working in your best interest, okay? You can put your trust in them because they are legally obligated to work in your best interest. Not all these companies are like that. And I, I did not know that. I didn't even know where to look for that information at, right? So um, it was time for me to take a hands-on approach. I pulled all my money out of the stock market. Another thing I didn't like about the whole 401k thing is that you're getting penalized when you want your money, right? Um, so anything that penalizes you so much, 10%, uh, for you to get your own money, for me, it was just not cool. Not cool at all, right? But if you do have a company that is like doing um, 401k match, uh, then it might make sense because if they're matching like half of what you put up there up to a certain amount of your income, you can add that to your return. Granted, there's normally vesting periods and things like that. So if you're somebody who kind of jumps around from job to job and you know you won't be able to really um, reap all of that because it's not necessarily yours until it vests, then maybe you wouldn't calculate this as a part of your return. But if you're someone who's been at your job for like five years, maybe you're already fully vested, then yes, that, that does contribute to your return and it could make sense to put your money in a 401k. Um, but for me, I just didn't feel comfortable enough for a long time um, but have my money in a 401k because I literally had no clue what was going on. But if you really want your money to work for you, you got to get active, little mama. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think that there's many people. I don't, I mean, and correct me if I'm wrong, definitely drop it in the comments. I don't think that there are many people who are millionaires, billionaires, or even multiple hundred thousandaires who will tell you, yeah, I, with all my money, I just threw it in a 401k and I forgot about it. No. No, I haven't heard it. Of course, I don't represent the whole world. I could definitely be wrong. But from, uh, from what I see, a lot of people become these millionaires and billionaires because they're so active with their money. That's not to say that there's not a portion of their money that is in some sort of index fund, um, some sort of mutual fund or whatever that's going to be kind of passively earning them some interest. Er 
you know what I mean, some growth, some dividends, whatever. I'm not saying that they don't do that, but a lot of it is being very active. A lot of it is having your own businesses, um, having real estate, which is a tax haven, and things like that. So, you know, I decided to take a more active approach, and that's what I do on my channel. I kind of just document what I'm researching. It's helpful for me. It's helpful for you guys, and I love what I do. Uh, but anyway, let's get into Zoom. Now, shout out to Blood Phantom 81 because they were the ones that made the recommendation for me to do a video on Zoom. Now, of course, we all know what Zoom is now. I mean, COVID damn sure put Zoom on the map. They have had crazy growth in earnings, which I'm going to go through in a second. Um, so, you know, it might be an interesting company to in invest in, especially um during this time right where covid is still very much so a thing very much so a threat they find new strands seemingly every week so we might be in this for a little bit longer right i don't know so what i want to do is kind of talk about the company i want to go through their 10k if you didn't know what a 10k is that basically is where they report all their earnings for the year okay so as an investor from an investor perspective um you know, what would I look at if I'm looking to invest in a company long term? This is not, let me just be clear, this is not literally for trading or anything. Obviously, when you're trading, that's a little bit more technical. You're looking more at charts. You're looking for patterns and trends. Um, when you're looking for long term investments, then you want to be a little bit more nitty gritty. You want to focus more on their growth, their business model. Um, you want to look at their, their assets. You want to look at their revenues. And then you'll use that information to see if it makes sense to go forward with them on a long-term basis. When you're trading, I don't want to say none of this stuff matters, but it kind of doesn't. <laughs> so if you go on sec.gov, and matter of fact, maybe I should just kind of show you guys how I do it. You go to sec.gov, right? And then you can go to company filings. You can type in whatever ticker you want to. So I'll type in ZM, which is Zoom. And then all their filings will come up. When you are a public company, you must have quarterly filings and an annual filing. The annual filing is called a 10K. The quarterly filings is called a 10Q, okay? And you'll see some other stuff in there too, not really important. So then, as you can see this in purple, this is the 10K, which I have opened here, okay? Now, these things are normally massive for absolutely no reason. Um, trust me, I'm in this field. We will take two months preparing this file, and almost nobody reads it. But anyways, so a couple of things. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but this is just how you can kind of get an idea of how it looks. They'll always go over their risk. They'll always talk about their income and they'll have what they call footnotes, which is where they kind of get into the deep details about their business. Now, can you read the whole thing? Sure. I don't know what you have going on. Maybe you're still quarantining yourselves. So have at it. Okay. Um, but I look at a couple of different things that are important to me. That being their financials, a couple of the footnotes if I want some more information, and then what they call the MDNA, which is Manager Discussion and Analysis. Now that is where they're really kind of having more like forward-looking statements, which is what you're interested in as an investor, right? Because you want to know what's next. Sure, you're making money right now, but you know the way technology goes. You could be hot this year and be nothing next year. So what are you going to do to keep up with times? So those things are important to me. So I took a couple of snippets from this and we'll go over those. Now I know, of course, a lot of people have lost their lives. I don't want to make this COVID situation light, make any light of it. But baby, I know Zoom is happy that this happened, okay? Because their revenue grew. All right, so I have to redo this part of the video. Either way, revenue grew 326% from 622 million in 2020 to 2.6 billion in 2021. That's hot. Gross profit was 261% increase, okay? So that is a very nice, healthy jump, okay? Now, is this sustainable? We'll talk about that in a little bit, but the point is, you know, obviously extremely, extremely important. And mind you, this is even factoring in the fact that they had removed certain time limits for their schools, right? So they literally let go of some potential extra earnings and they still made this kind of money. So very, very, very impressive. Of course, everything went up. Their expenses went up dramatically too because they had to kind of, you know, prepare for all of this. All this extra demand requires more expenses. So yes, but they still came out on top for the year. Now, what they mentioned, 
when in that same MDNA section I was telling you guys about. I'm going to read this verbatim. There is no assurance that we will experience an increase in paid hosts or that new or existing users will continue to utilize our services after COVID has tampered. Tapered. <laughs> tampered. Um, moreover, the tapering of the COVID-19 pandemic, particularly as vaccinations become widely available, may result in a decline in paid hosts and users once individuals are no longer working or attending schools from home. That is extremely important because you know this is, I mean, um, they're saying it may, we're not sure. I'm sure. When things get more back to normal, they are definitely going to experience a decrease in their revenue, right? This is not sustainable. We know that. We know we're not going to see anywhere near this amount of increase this year because things have been tapering off, right? And let me not say that because you never know. They, something else might happen where there's even a higher demand for video communication, but I definitely could see this going down. Now, by how much is anybody's guess? I still think that they're going to be around, okay? Um, and I do know that, especially in New York, a lot of companies have remained work from home, right? Um, so I don't think they'll go back down to pre-COVID levels because there's a lot of companies. I know a couple people in particular, personally. I know people who their job was like, uh, sold the building, we're not renting anymore, y'all stay home, okay? So will that continue to happen? Yes. And I also think that because we've had this big project um, where everybody has been working from home, a lot of companies can see that, you know, this is actually working. People are still working, right? Like people are still getting things done on their own timing. Maybe they'll um, offer some hybrid. I'm secretly wishing, wishing for that for my own job, right? Like, can we work from home some days and other days can we work from the office? Um, so if we have those kind of hybrid schedules, then we'll still need video chat, right? That'll still be important. Um, so I do think that it's going to go down, but I just don't think it's going to be completely, uh, you know, exiled from our day-to-day -day life as well. Another thing that I read was international expansion. So their revenue from the rest of the world actually represented 31% um, of their total revenue. So, you know, maybe I'm sitting here in America. You have to remember this world is so interconnected that we can't just look at only America when we're looking at these companies because this company has a presence literally worldwide, right? So what if we are in smaller countries where... Maybe they don't have as much, they, they need access to other countries, right? Quickly. They want to expand their businesses. You can't necessarily have a meeting with somebody who in China when you're living in America. You can't necessarily have a quick meeting in 15 minutes. No. You have to, you know, you'd have to buy a plane ticket and all of that. So there's potential for there to be some more growth within the international space, right? So they are wanting things to grow, but they're also saying that, um, their ability to conduct these operations will require a considerable amount of resources and management attention. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of communication barriers, you know, obviously it's different languages you'd have to kind of um, adapt these this system into. So it's something to think about. It could, be def it could definitely be expensive, but if you're getting more of the world on board, then that could ultimately increase your revenue and increase your gross profit. Just taking a quick look at their assets versus their liabilities. So their total assets is 5.2 uh in thousands, okay. 5.2 billion. 5.2 billion dollar, 5.3 I guess billion dollars of assets. Most of it being cash and marketable securities. Um one thing to know about these marketable securities this is super random, but a lot of times the valuations on these things are not super clear, so even though they're telling us it's two billion. When they actually go out into the market and try to sell it, it might be dramatically different. Like we literally don't know. So you take it as face value right now, but we you definitely don't know if this number actually holds true. Just saying. Um, yeah. <laughs> so five point three dollars in assets or three trillion dollars in assets and their liabilities is one point four. So they're actually looking good. They're not sol they're not insolvent, right? If they were to sell all their assets, they could pay off all their debt and still have some money to play around with. That's what you typically want to see in a company. You don't want to see the opposite where they're saddled in debt. If they sold the shirts on their back, they couldn't pay off their creditors. Um, you don't want to see that, right? Because that to me is indicative of trouble. So they seem to be very well funded. They seem to have a good idea of, you know, management, whoever's managing it, they're doing a good job. 
because let's see accounts payable accrued expenses and other liabilities yeah anyways so that looks good okay when it comes to their revenue like i already said um it was a big increase 671 million dollars of net income after everything so they had a very blessed year because as you can see back in 2020 or the fiscal year 2020 because i think their year ends january 31st i mean this number <laughs> was 21 million or tri- million yeah 21 million dollars i'm having a struggle right now 21 million and then if you go <laughs> 2019 they make jack squat right so this is doing they're doing fantastic right now um and if they continue to expand into international markets and they continue to hold their presence um, as pretty much the go-to for calls, then it'll make sense. Now, they do have some competitors, okay? Google, Microsoft, to name a few. Some of these big dogs who are very well-funded, um, heavy capital, and they could probably take over this space, right? I don't know what they could do, but they could offer services that might be better than Zoom. So you have to watch out for the competitors as well when you're thinking about investing in these companies because what if it gets taken over by something else. Think about MySpace, right? Maybe a lot of y'all don't even know what MySpace is, but MySpace used to be, I mean, it used to be it, okay? I used to love going on MySpace. It was social media, the first social media we really all had. Um, And then Facebook came and MySpace became nothing but a distant memory. And then Instagram came and Facebook became something for like the older people. You know, like when it comes to technology, it's just changing so rapidly. So it's really hard to stay on top. The Zoom stock is at, how much was it? Zoom stock is at $320, call it. So that's a little bit expensive if you're somebody who is not really big on investing. If you're into buying fractional shares, you can do that on other platforms. But what I like about Weeble is that they actually don't really allow that. I think that's just kind of like, in my opinion, of course, it just doesn't really make a lot of sense, right? You can buy shares at price points that you're comfortable with and still see gains. You don't necessarily have to buy fractional shares. Um, but I am now officially a Weeble influencer. So if you guys are looking into getting stocks, please click the link in the description. You're gonna get a free stock from that. You're gonna help me out, I'm gonna help you out. And then you can get your investing starting that way. Uh, the Weeble app is extremely super easy to use. It's user friendly. What's cool about it too is that, and I'm sure other apps have this, but it's not Weeble, okay? So what's cool about it also is that you can type up whatever stocks you want to when you're doing your research, for example, like how I've kind of outlined this to you. Take it a step further. You can go into your Weeble app and type in ZM, and then you'll be able to actually look at news articles. And then you can kind of read through those, and maybe those will give you more insight into the company, and then from there you can make a more educated decision. You can also see charts if you're into the analytical stuff, right? Um, a lot of people are more technical and they kind of want to see movement. I'm not into that. Um, I want to get into it though, so if you guys have any resources about that, definitely drop it in the comments and help a player out. But definitely check out Weeble. Please put in $100. Once you do that, you will get your free stocks. And, you know, tell me you did it so I could say thank you because I am trying to get my, um, my you know, promotions up and stuff like that. <laughs> but that will do it. So if you like this video, please be sure to like this video and share it with your friends. And if you have anything else going on, you know what to do. Go ahead and binge watch me. And until next time, keep your money up.